Japan, looking at what we're seeing in the yen. Yes, yen strength this morning, but not by any huge margin. Uh, talk me through what is plan A and plan B when it comes to assumptions about what happens to yield curve control and which of the ja Japanese bank governors is set to make the big moves here. So plan A is absolutely that probably not going to happen until the second half of this year. So people who are trading the yen on a, a policy change for the Bank of Japan might be quite premature. It's likely to come under the, the, the new governor, and he takes us over in April. So it may not come till June, probably the very earliest, and more likely the second half, because he's likely to go about this gradually. He has said the current policy is appropriate. So that is plan A. Plan B, which is a small tail risk, perhaps in the market only a couple of percent, but maybe it should be as a high as 10% probability, is the Kuroda has one more meeting, the March meeting. Now, he likes surprising markets, and how about that he removes yield curve control policy as his final move step, and therefore hands over to the next Bank of Japan governor with the problem already kind of semi-dealt with. And I don't think that, I do think that's a tail risk in the market, but I don't think it should be as small a probability as is being priced. OK, and I know that we're going to talk more about the Japanese data, uh, inflation pressures coming in, where we see them, where we don't, and what that means for the incoming governor. We'll talk a little bit about that later on in the programme. Um, let me ask you about the CPI report. Of course, that is the big data point that we're waiting for. Services, excluding housing, seems to be a real focus, a focus for markets, but also the reason for that is it's a focus for Jerome Powell as well. Yeah, and I think what's really important today is, is it's, it's one of the hardest ones to predict in a while for the reaction function in terms that the whisper number is definitely for this to be a beat, especially after the revisions on Friday show that the core last year was stronger than expected and there's been a slight change in how the measurement will come in for this month um, and therefore it's likely to be slightly higher than some of the forecasts you see on Bloomberg. I still think, even though the whisper number is higher, that the market is a little bit nervous about inflation restarting again. So I think that the, the backdrop picture for the next few weeks is that there's an asymmetric reaction function for a beat on inflation to lead yields sustainably higher over the next few weeks. Whereas if we get a miss in inflation, I expect a big short-term reaction, but I'm not sure it follows through to the downside and a downside move might pair within a couple of weeks. Yes, and in terms of what is a beat and what is a miss, I mean, uh, JP Morgan have been running the, the numbers as they see them and suggesting that anything higher than 6.5%, uh, that would obviously be seen, um, that, would, that would obviously be a, be a sizable miss versus estimates or, or, or well, a, a big beat versus estimates, but not in the direction that the Fed would want to see. And less than 6% would trigger the sort of opposite reaction. I mean, where is the range of outcomes interesting to you? Well, I actually think core is probably the one that's maybe most interesting, and I think it's the month-on-month the, the -month core that people will get excited about. We are expected to re-accelerate. I think that since Friday, the revisions are closer to 0.4% than 0.3%, but more around 0.37%. If we get 0.5% month-on-month on core, expect this market to be very upset.